Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. I'm, uh, I'm at the library in Attercliffe, Sheffield, just opposite the Mercedes dealers and opposite where uh, the EIS, where Olympic team train. Just uh, having a, a latte. I thought we'd do a video, seeing as uh, I'm bored today. I think that uh, I'm going to ask the boxing fans, mainly the hardcore fans, and the haters as well, because we like them. They like they like to uh, tune in. I want to ask you all what you think about boxing and where we're headed now, and is it all about money? Our fighters. Once you scratch the surface, are they really fighting the fights? Or are fighters controlled by managers? Are TV companies getting too involved? Is this because of the belts? All the belts are split up? I don't know. Are fighters bottling it? I watched an interview with Mike Muhammad Ali or Michael Parkinson, who was a Barnsley lad, near where Josh Whale lives. And Ali was going on about there being ten contenders and the champion. And I think one of them had had a dig about Joe Bugner and Ali had said, How can you have a dig about him? He's the number I think it was number four ranked contender in the world and that's how I'd like to see it go, boxing. Uh, I think if Tyson Fury can get his hands on the ring magazine belt, I'd like to see Tyson just defend that. Because I think it could end up where Tyson Fury is probably the best heavyweight in the world. Although I can't say that at the moment because I don't think his comeback is complete, but he's on the way. Tyson could make a statement here, he could make a big statement by saying look, the ring magazine, I know you all the belts, I don't need you all, I've got everything. He could maybe win the WBC, pay the sanctioning fee and then vacate it and just have the ring magazine belt and prove a point here and stick it to these sanctioning bodies that I think are the main problem in the sport. Uh, Promoters are going to manipulate rankings, they're going to lobby for fighters, we know a lot of that goes on. Uh, I've seen it close up myself, I'm not going to mention any names. I don't like what I see but what can you do, it goes on, everybody does it don't they? For example, Conor Ben, he's not fighting anybody is he really? He's the number 6 ranked WBA guy in the world, he's got commercial contracts coming out of his ears. I nearly said something else then. So he's not going to want to lose his undefeated record or his, uh, his ranking. So he's, he's going to want to keep fighting the nobody fights and say I'm learning on the job. How can you learn on the job though when you're a WBA ranked number six? You know, he's ranked higher than former world champions. Could you imagine putting Conor Benning with the number six ranked guy with the IBF? 
or the number six ranked guy even with the WBO. It'd be a bloodbath, wouldn't it? It'd be a bloodbath. Now, I just think that promoters are going to manipulate the system and I think that sanctioning bodies are and I think that boxers are going to hide behind these people to not have the proper fights. Conor Ben should really be looking to fight guys above the WBA. Five, four, three and two and getting in a position to fight Keith Thurman. That should be his target. If not, why is he WBA ranked number six? I don't like to bring this up because I'm starting to lose my patience with BoxRec but as a guide, it's good for a guide. He's ranked 192 on BoxRec. He might have moved in the last couple of days but... Josh Kelly is ranked number 20 on BoxRec but yet he's number 7 with the WBA. How does that work out? I'll tell you how it works out. Josh Kelly, he's not got as many commercial deals as Conor Ben. Taking nothing away from Conor Ben, but I think he's just going to be another another Chris Eubank Jr. living off his dad's name. But Chris Eubank Jr. can really fight, but he's very limited. He's got a good heart and a good engine, but he's a middleweight. But getting back to fights not happening, it's very disappointing to see these fights not happening. We always seem to get them when the past the sell-by date. We never got Billy Joe against Barker. We never got him against Macklin. We never got, we not got him against Martin Murray. He pulled out that fight twice. Why? Why was that? Billy Joe beats all them, but why, why didn't you take them fights? Were it the wrong time? Was the money not right? I don't know. Why is Billy Joe not fought Gennady Golovkin? Why are they not making a big song and dance about fighting Callum Smith? Because I think it's an hard fight for him, but I want to see him tested. I want to see Billy Joe shook to his boots in a proper fight. He may never get hit. Tyson Fury, you give him credit for taking the Wilder fight, but he got dropped twice. Will he take that fight again? Yeah, I think he will, but I think he'll take it when it's mega, 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 mega money. And, uh, I just want to see these fights happen. Is Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, Al Heyman, are those people responsible for the big fights not happening? Bob Arum, throw him into the mix. He's always there or thereabouts, isn't he, the Bob Father? Is that what's happening? Why are these fights not happening? Why have we got Tyson Fury coming out with all this razzmatazz, massive entrance? He had that big entrance the other night, a big build up, and he finished it with a, a song and all that, didn't he? And it's all very, all great, selling yourself to the public and things like that in fancy suits and big entourages and that. But when you strip it down to the bare, bare metal, who was he in with? He did what he had to do. Schooled him. It was masterful. And he took him out there with venom, but he did get caught with one punch. But he looked masterful. But that guy was there for him to look masterful. But, in my opinion, it was like polishing a turd, that fight. Polishing a turd. Is the product not as good as the profile? We had all the big profile, all the big hype. For what, four minutes, four or five minutes, was it? We're all over. 20 pound on pay-per-view. We give Eddie Earn grief for Joshua, Charlie Martin, Joshua Dylan White, Joshua Molina, Joshua Brazil, Takem, Parker. We give him praise for Klitschko. We give Eddie Earn all that stick, Pavetkin as well, the guy in his 40th year. We give him all that stick, and then we have, and then it, it seems to have gone unnoticed. Now, nobody in the boxing community wants to say anything. If you say anything, you're classed as bitter, aren't you? Oh, he's bitter. Porky, you're a hater, you're bitter. 
You're jealous. You're just saying that because you left Peter Fury and you're Peter's pal. You're Peter's jailbird pal and blah de blah and you know some of the comments that I read. These are faceless people, aren't they? The faceless people that if they had any balls, they'd send me a video, wouldn't they, on a direct message. They send a direct message to me on Twitter at Corner Porky and let me see you, then I'll reply to you. Then I'll have you on the channel. All them people that have got a problem with what I say, I'm accountable for it. Come on the channel. I'll get you on the channel. I'll get you on the channel, I'll do it in car so, so it sounds clear. So we don't get any muffled sounds like we did the other day when I used Dale's phone. When I had Stig on board. I'll turn Bluetooth on next time if I'm not rushing but... Anybody wants to come on the channel, you're more than welcome to have a debate with me. Don't be like little girls sending little text messages on your little fake accounts. You know, uh, be men, be real men. Speaking of real men, this morning on motorway I had New Age Pod on. I turned the New Age Pod on and I listened to it. And uh, the first 10 minutes was disgusting no homo hashtag no homo what was that martin and andy what 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 were they talking about bring terry back that were why would real men want to talk about things like that i don't i don't get that i don't get that at all uh, i don't get that I just don't, I just don't get it, uh, it's crazy, it was craziness, and uh, I think they're better than that, I mean, what sort of men talk about things like that, it's, uh, uh, it's just madness. It's just madness. Uh, I've just uh, I'd sent a tweet out actually regarding that, and I forgot to uh, send it. Well, I put the tweet up, but I'd not press send. So I've put a tweet out now regarding that. Uh, I'm accountable. I don't go behind anybody's back. If I've got something to say, I'll say it. I quite like that pod. I like that one. And uh, I always catch up with pods on a Monday morning. <laughs> I like that one, and I like, I've just listened to Boxing Asylum this morning. Six o'clock in the morning, Boxing Asylum. And, uh, nine o'clock, New Age Pod. And, uh, I don't know what they were thinking about. And I can't imagine them talking about that like Teddy were there, but... It's... It's boxing, it's spark boxing, isn't it? I know people say, you talk about drugs and prison and stuff like that, but drugs and prisons and court cases and stuff like that, that's into mine with boxing. Talking about things like that, where they were talking about for the first 10 minutes, 8 seconds today was... It's, blown, it's uh, shocked me, I'm going to say blown me away then, but that's PC not correct, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, it just shocked me a bit. But it is what it is, isn't it? But getting back to boxing as a whole, I don't think people are having the correct fights. I think that it's about money. I don't think it's about belts. I, I mean, Tyson Fury don't want to. Doesn't seem to be in a, in a rush to get all the Wilder. I would have been straight back in for that fight with Wilder. What if Wilder gets beat now? What if he gets beat against Ortiz? If he fights Ortiz, what if he gets beat? What if Tyson gets beat? Banana skins are there in heavyweight history, it's littered with them. Tyson's defence isn't as good as it used to be, he does get caught. Schwartz caught him once, Wilder caught him three times, three. Four if you count the second knockdown, because he caught him twice then. Uh, hey up, let me, ring, let me ring you back in a bit, yeah?
Right, I'm just all right, it's in a bit. But uh but yeah, so it is what it is, isn't it? Oh it is what it is. It is what it is, but Tyson's got a masterful defence, but Wilder only has to get it right. He's got to be switched on for 12 rounds against Wilder. Wilder only needs Tyson to let his guard down for one second and it could be it could be over that fight. But uh Get me a get me a Lacoste top, a polo top. Uh, get me an orange one to go with them orange loafers, and I'll just stick me jeans on with that. That then, and that'll do to go there weekend. Weekend, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't going orange one. <laughs> I was just thinking what colour to get this week. All right, it's in a bit. But now, uh, I just think that. That fight should have happened next, and I've, you could say a friend, a good friend of mine who I respect, said to me, "Oh, you're bitter, you're bitter." I'm not bitter. I've never been bitter about anything in my life. I think bitterness makes you jealous, and I'm happy with my life. Ten year, two month behind the door over a twelve year, seven month period. So for me to be out, fifteen year, one month, I've been out. Apart from 15 days for that drink drive chase I took. So I think 15 days and I got that dropped. I got out on appeal, so I think I'm ahead of the game. You go into that life, you have a look, you learn your mistakes, you make sure you come out of that life, faculties intact, and everything's alright. So I'm ahead of the game. I can devote my energies to my channel for another three or four years. Um, very, very happy with my with my lot. Now, there's a lot of people who comment on my channel who are not happy with themselves. A couple of them have actually turned from haters into friends, and they said they did it because they're not happy. You've got to be happy with what you do. When I was 16 years old. I left school, I got kicked out of school actually, and within a few months I worked in London. And I didn't like that, being away from home, being away from the comforts. But you've got to take yourself out of your comfort zone. But I always said to myself, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something I'm, I'm going to be happy at. Happy at. And I like being around the boxing scene. I like doing anything. We like anything boxing related, anything. And if you can find that balance in your life, that's good. So all you haters, go and find something that you're happy with. Barry Hearn once said that to me. Do something you're happy with and have no regrets. And that's brilliant. Or, I could be storming about going from car auctions, getting cars ready to MOT and paint and valet and chasing about and waiting on people and getting stressed out and then people coming to view them and saying, oh, we'll think about it. And I'm like, what's there to think about? You've just test drove it. You said you like it. You can afford it and you still need to think about it. So, find something that you like doing. But I like talking boxing and being around boxing. And I also like to see good fights. And when I'm seeing people have profiles like Tyson Fury's got and Anthony Joshua, the profiles they've got, and then they're just milking the system. And Wilder as well, them three can all fight. They're milking the system. And it's the fans that lose out. And I don't want Tyson to wake up age 50 and regret it. Alright, Justin? That's how I look at it. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? It's boxing and we move forward, don't we? So, but I just want to see great fights. I thought the show were brilliant, but the fight didn't last long, did it? It took him out. But then again, I'd have still moaned if it went 12 rounds, wouldn't I? So he can't win, can he? He looked the business. 19 stone, round about 19 stone he was. So he's put a bit of weight on, actually. But maybe he put that on for a bit of power. But I don't think half a stone makes a difference. But, masterful performance, but 
We've got a guy there, ranked number two by the WBO. Andy Patterson, I was listening to that this morning, made a good point about, he made a good point about, ranking systems and what is the answer. Well, I've just said the answer. We just need Ring Magazine belt, they all need to jog on, don't they, these sanctioning bodies. Now, if you Google, if you Google the name Robert Aram, Bob Aram, born in 1931, he's had over 1300 shows, Bob Aram. Now, Google his name, you'll see that Bob Aram were indicted, wasn't he? And he had to give evidence. Bob Aram gave evidence against other people. In other words, he grasped everybody up. Bob Lee, he grasped him up. He grasped them all up. Frederick Kushner, all of them. Google Bob Aram and the IBF scandal from 1995, backhanders, and he had to give evidence in the year 2000. Now, that's Bob Aram for you. Bob Aram is a grass. That may sound harsh, but it's all there in Wikipedia. Now, could you imagine having to do deals with Bob Aram, and as soon as he didn't like it, if anything untoward had gone on, and he's gonna do that. Now, and this is a lawyer, by the way, this is a lawyer. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, but what can you do? So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. There was something else I forgot to mention. But, uh, but uh, it'll, it'll probably come to me. It was something that uh, Martin and Andy broke, bro brought up on their pod. I'm going to nick, nick the, thick, the, the, uh, the work that they were talking about. Not nick it, but talk about it. It's something I'd missed, but I picked up on. Because you, you know all these lads, similar to myself, they'll come out with things on their pods. And I'll think, I never looked at it like that. And then when I go into a meeting with people like Dennis or Glyn Rhodes, which I'm going to be seeing Glyn Rhodes in 30 minutes, or Mick Whale, Mick Whale, Glyn Rhodes. I'll be seeing Mick, and, Mick Whale and Josh Whale this week to talk about what we're going to do moving forward. Speak of the devil, Josh Whale. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll mention things like that, what I pick up on on other pods, and this is how you learn yourself. Look at Stig, he's not very hardcore, is he Stig? He, he likes to just know about Tyson, but he picks things up all the time. I heard him going on about outpoints. Tyson likes to outpoint people. Stig coming out with the word outpointing. I'm impressed, Stig. Keep on trucking, Stig. But uh, yeah, so anybody out there, a lot of people keep asking me in emails, oh, what do you think about me getting my own camera and that porky? And go and do it. Try and get friends with somebody who works in the boxing industry. Pal somebody up and just. Try and make your own little way, like I am doing. 50 months I've been at this game now with Dennis. We had a couple of fallouts, but it is what it is, isn't it? We move on, don't we? But as far as I'm concerned, boxing's a fantastic sport, and you know, you have to move forward, don't you? But you know, I could be doing this, or I could be, I could be here today, or I could be at home. Uh, looking at uh, emails that I've been sent off Purple Aki. I mean, Purple Aki is supposed to be going to get me in here. Purple Aki. The bogeyman of Liverpool. But, or I could be sat with Jimmy Tibbs and Mark Tibbs having a cup of four in London. Or sat here on my own billing old mates. Talking boxing to you guys. It's better than sat in a porter cabin in it waiting for somebody to come and look at a 56 plate Ford Focus so but what can you do? I'm trying to think what that other thing was I forgot to mention it's very important as well it was but anyway it's gone out me it'll come back to me so keep on trucking keep sporting boxing peace out